Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Ravaged by an earthquake in 2010, most in this Caribbean outpost are living in darkness. Globally, 20% of people don't have access to electricity. In Haiti, it's 75%. So electricity, the plan, is not really an electricity. It's clear. Impoverished and without alternatives, Haiti's become a testing ground for a DIY power system that could help bring electricity to the 1.3 billion people worldwide who currently have none. It's one of many tentative steps toward a future where solar energy will play an ever larger role in powering the planet. In one hour, the sun provides the equivalent amount of energy that the entire world uses in a year. This is the story of the solar pioneers and the technology they hope will shape the future. Single mum, Madeline, has never had access to electricity. Today, that's going to change. Until now, she's used kerosene to feed lamps, spending $10 a month. But her home's about to be hooked up to a groundbreaking energy system that will light her home for just $1.50 a month. Alors, puisque les Anglais c'est pionnier et pour système installation ça que énergie propre gagne hein, parce que les autres zones ils bougent un courant, capteur jalousie, car dit bon, ils ont besoin d'un courant tout, même les autres villes gagnent courant, ils ont même tout, ils ont besoin d'un courant tout. The country's limited national grid hasn't made it to the town of Les Anglais, but this town's generating its own electricity in a groundbreaking power system that could provide a template for towns all across the developing world. The system's been pioneered by Alison Archambault from NGO EarthSpark International. It's one of only a handful of towns across the world that are 100% powered by solar energy and available with electricity 24 hours a day with smart meters that enable people to pay as you go and top up their meter and change their um, access to electricity to meet their needs. This system provides enough energy for this community's current needs, from lighting people's homes to powering the town's mill. It's a model that could be the first step on the energy ladder for many others in the developing world. There's incredible opportunity for innovation in these places that lack infrastructure. So when you have no incumbent system, it's actually a wonderful opportunity to build a better system. It's something good for this town in Les Anglais, it's good for other towns in Haiti, and it's also replicable in other places around the world. We're really trying to share this information and build the models that really can spin off and scale. Global electricity demand is projected to grow by almost 80% over the next 25 years, with developing countries accounting for the bulk of the increase. Past increases in energy supply have relied largely on fossil fuels, which in many situations still provide the cheapest options. But they come with an obvious environmental cost. And we're the first generation to feel the impact of climate change. We're the last generation that can do something about it. We only get one home. We only get one planet. There's a growing pressure to phase out fossil fuels and deliver cleaner energy, a cause being championed by global organizations like Richard Branson's Carbon War Room. I have a slogan, don't, don't dig up the dead. Anything that comes from under the ground is creating this blanket around the earth and that is going to inevitably heat it up to potentially a very dangerous level. So what we need to do is power the world by 
um, fuels that are created above the ground. And I obviously have a much bigger carbon footprint than most people. The desire to travel is just one example of the contradiction between the energy demands of the rich world and concerns about the carbon emissions that result. All the more reason for those who profit to take a lead in finding ways to meet those demands with clean, renewable energy. There's a lot of people trying to resist the move to clean energies. Um, and they're doing it because they don't necessarily believe in global warming or they want to protect the oil and the coal industries. They're fighting for their livelihoods. The problem is that implementing an entirely new renewable infrastructure isn't easy, especially in countries that are heavily reliant on oil, coal and gas. Coleman, Alabama, is home to Appel Steel. All of this is very high intense power consumption equipment. If the power goes out in this facility, it costs this company $10,000 an hour. This is a factory where metal meets muscle. But behind this Deep South manufacturing plant lies a surprise. It's the world's first off-grid solar-powered industrial factory. The visionary behind this self-generating energy system is Chuck Boggs from Ace LLC Solar. The coal, the oil lobbyists all said it couldn't be done. Even the renewable people said it couldn't be done. I searched and searched and finally found the electrical engineer that thought about it and he said, I think we can do it, Chuck. And here is the result. This manufacturing plant is now generating its own electricity. So it's no longer reliant upon the grid. It expects not just to cut its carbon emissions, but to cut its energy bills too. Tax incentive schemes are helping businesses like Appel Steel to take the plunge. But long term, subsidies may not be necessary. The prices of fossil fuels like oil, coal and gas fluctuate, but until recently they've all been a far cheaper option to solar. But solar is catching up fast. Year on year, solar power production is getting exponentially cheaper. Price means nothing without performance. And one of the greatest challenges facing solar pioneers is how to make hay when the sun isn't shining. Now, one man believes he's found a revolutionary way to store solar energy. The issue with existing batteries is that they suck, OK? <laughs> They're really horrible. Tesla founder Elon Musk has developed a new lithium-ion battery technology that's being rolled out as a consumer product. You can actually go, if you want, completely off-grid. You can take your solar panels, charge the battery packs, and that's, and that's all you use. Powering homes is a starting point, but by releasing this video presentation to the world, Musk's company was highlighting much more than the launch of a new product. So we could power a small city and we can keep going here. <laughs> In a performance tailored for a mass audience, his bold claims pointed to a reinvention of the way we power the world. This is actually within the power of humanity to do. It, we have done things like this before. Still in its infancy, this battery technology already enables Appel Steel to run its operation, day or night. A few years ago, this would not have been possible. We collaborated with Tesla's engineering, and between their battery technology and our integration, we're able to capture energy into these batteries to run our facility for six hours. In spite of all the recent progress, Solar still only produces 1% of global electricity. To become a serious player, it needs another game-changing technological leap. One scientist in Oxford, England, thinks he may have the answer. In an air-locked laboratory, tests are being carried out on a new material that could be far more effective at capturing energy than traditional silicon solar panels. 
So this is a solution that we call perovskite. It's an extremely effective solar absorber. Bulky existing solar panels convert around 20% of light into electricity as it passes through. In the lab, they can achieve the same results with this new super thin material. This material is something on the order of several thousand times more effective at converting photons into electrons than silicon. As a result of that, it can be made very thin. In fact, it's so thin, it's only about 2,000 angstroms in thickness. That makes it transparent when applied to glass. So we have a very thin coating on this conventional piece of glass done on this equipment. And in under a minute, we produced effectively a photovoltaic solar panel. Just combining perovskite with traditional silicon panels has already been proven to nearly double their output. It's an early indication of the potential for products using perovskite to be highly efficient, lightweight, and cost effective. We have a ways to go before we can actually truly change the world, but we're on that note in time. It represents something that's a little more efficient and far less expensive. If a technology like this can make the jump from the lab to the mass market, glass buildings could generate electricity in an entirely new way. With less dependence on the grid, the economics of the energy industry could be transformed too. The energy industry is the largest industry in the world. And imagine changing where the control of that grid occurs. No longer is it in the large electricity energy generating companies, but it becomes distributed amongst communities and even individuals. Back in Haiti, the lights are about to be switched on in Madeline's house. Fossil fuels have served the world's energy needs for centuries, but solar technology is now on the brink of being properly competitive. It's the start of a long journey, but today, homes in Haiti and factories in Alabama are beginning to show the potential of a different energy path. One that's clean, renewable, and urgently needed.